With the Indian Army now controlling multiple key ridges on the south bank of the Pangong Lake in eastern Ladakh has effective military control of the entire disputed area in that, in that specific region. Now we're going to explain this for you, bring you a lot of images which show the entire area and why exactly dominating the heights which they are now doing is a big deal. For starters, this map that you actually see shows all of the areas where there have been Chinese incursions. The area that we are specifically talking about is South Pangong, which has been highlighted. Now, the Indian Army is in full control of uh, the South Pangong or bank of the Pangong Lake by occupying key ridges. The yellow area that you actually see is the area where the Indian Army occupies the heights. This after a nighttime attempt by Chinese forces to grab territory in the area. By occupying these ridges, the Indian Army is able to directly observe Chinese positions from a height, a huge advantage in mountain warfare. We'll explain how that works in a few moments. Now, this is the broad area where the Indian Army is now dominating the heights. And these are Chinese positions within the so-called disputed zone, an area which India believes is ours. And this is a, a close-up of Chinese structures along the banks of the Spangor Lake, not to be mistaken with the Pangong Lake. This is a bit south of that. All of these positions are actually within an area India believes is ours. India has responded to the Chinese attempt at building up tank forces and infantry a short distance away, albeit on their side of the line of actual control. But let's give you a certain perspective on this. The same areas which you saw just now of the Chinese positions when viewed from a height looks like this. And therefore you can see the enormous advantage if our soldiers who are entrenched on the heights actually have a top-down view of the Chinese positions. It becomes much easier to target and to observe. Now the Chinese would like to deploy their tanks on this road that they have built in the disputed area, the Spangur area, which links to the Chinese posts that we've just seen. But given the position of Indian soldiers, these can be targeted with missiles. How? Well, again, this is another angle of some of those areas which are, where we just showed you the Chinese road. Given the position of Indian soldiers on the heights, we dominate this road and therefore tanks, armored personnel carriers and other vehicles that the Chinese try and bring into this disputed area uh, can in fact be targeted. Therefore, holding the high ground is a huge advantage. Next, this is from that same area and these are broadly positions which India now occupies. If you look to a particular direction, then you can actually see all of China in undisputed areas. You can see the line of actual control and from this point of view, you can look down at all of the Chinese positions, again, to reinforce that point that the high ground allows clear observation. That's what the Indian Army has now tried. The Chinese embassy says India's move has grossly violated China's territorial sovereignty and that these military moves have damaged peace and tranquility along the China-India border areas. India insists that our actions are defensive and uh, an aggressive Chinese move is what we've responded to. That Chinese move was to push in forces into this region. Well, joining us now, Lieutenant General D.S. Huda, the former Northern Army commander. Thanks, General, very much for being with us. Um, when we were speaking earlier on yesterday, there were signs that India had actually moved in. We now know that the entire area, which is disputed as far as the Chinese are concerned, it's an area we believe is ours, is effectively controlled by the Indian Army because we hold the heights. How important is it to hold the heights? Uh, so, Vishnu, as you brought out, uh, you know, whoever holds the heights and mountains is uh, at a tremendous, tremendous uh, advantage. Uh, and while uh, we were holding posts uh, on the South Bank, which were, you know, dominating these areas, but these posts were, you know, lesser in number uh, because things were calm. Uh, now that the Indian Army has seen attempts by the Chinese to come into this area, uh, they would have uh, strengthened, as you're pointing out, strengthened their domination over the area, occupied uh, many new positions. And that gives us, uh, as, you, as you are pointing out, I can't see the map, uh, but uh, hmm. as you're pointing out, uh, gives us tremendous advantage, uh, both uh, to be able to look into uh, Chinese territory, as also to be able to target them uh, with your long-range weapons and, and missiles, etc., uh, I know the Chinese are saying that, uh, you know, we've sort of changed this uh, status for in this area across the LSE, uh, 
uh, the fact is uh, vishnu uh, the indian army was only responding to uh, what were chinese moves uh, and in this huge atmosphere of you know distrust that exists between the two sides uh, i think there was no option but for the indian troops to occupy these positions general if you look at the chinese statements these are the strongest statements which they perhaps ever issued essentially saying that we violated their ter territorial integrity uh, that we are responsible for this um and uh, that um uh these military moves they say they have damaged peace and tranquility along the chinese china india border areas um is the onus now really on the chinese uh, to to uh, to to sort of do something whether diplomatically militarily because we seem to have acted and acted quite proactively within the confines of a defensive move uh, but where do you see this actually going forward the issue as i said uh, you know there's an enormous uh, trust deficit uh, and particularly uh, you know referring to the chinese statement we have seen very similar statements uh, you know which which came out after galwan uh, on pengong so their uh, you know ambassadors clearly said that we are at our traditional border line uh, you know trying to say that we haven't we haven't carried out any kind of uh, intrusion now uh, and therefore i said you know there's this Uh, so much mistrust uh, that india has on china the ball is clearly vishnu and china sport they need to do something if they want peace and tranquility on the border uh, i think it's time uh, they were stalling you know there was a, there was a complete deadlock in uh, in diplomatic and uh, military level uh, engagement talks therefore i think the ball is clearly in china sport and i think they need to do something you know to 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 build trust uh, to restart the disengagement uh, and the escalation process um do you believe that there is now a sense that the process of talking is just notional it's not really something that we believe will achieve anything which is why we've acted yeah sure vishnu uh, and i i just hope this uh, you know this latest incident uh, triggers some kind of uh, introspection on the chinese side uh, the fact is vishnu with so many thousands of soldiers facing off uh, the kind of uh, you know massive deployments that have occurred on on both sides uh, any move uh, any military maneuver taking place close to the lsc uh, you know is a potential flash point so i know there is talks going on at the brigade command level i i just hope there is a realization also on the chinese side that while you can keep talking peace and tranquility i think actions must also you know match up with words so uh, you know this attempt to Uh, stall the talks to say that this engagement process has already been completed we've done what we had to do uh, i i think uh, they they need to now start looking at whether you know this kind of strategy uh, is going to lead to peace and tranquility as they talk um a lot of our, of our viewers will not understand how it's even possible to have tanks in high altitude areas in eastern ladakh the reason i talk about tanks is it was because of the build up of chinese tanks on their side of the line of actual control in south pangong uh, that indian soldiers is one of the reasons that we actually went and occupied the heights uh, how important do you believe that the tank factor actually is uh, in 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 a lot of these areas depsang up way up north and even over here so there are areas um, uh, vishnu uh, where usage of uh, employment of armor and mechanized forces is possible uh, i think when people look at ladakh you know the first images that flash up in your mind is kargil and siachen uh, eastern ladakh is almost an extension of the you know tibetan plateau so the terrain is uh, you know not mountainous in that sense in some areas so there are valleys uh, large river valleys there are gaps uh, like the spangur gap Uh, and then there are these uh, you know areas of plains uh, so we call it depsang plains on the chinese side is called the linzi thang plains uh, these are areas where uh, armor employment is possible uh, and certainly you know it's a, such a big force multiplier uh, when you are when you are employing armor so i think the uh, the advantage of holding heights from where you can employ your anti tank weapons and missiles etc is, is critical in these areas yeah um and therefore uh, again just just the the last point where do you actually see the process of military talks or diplomatic talks from go going forward from here uh, it's quite clear that india has has made a statement over here and therefore does this perhaps at the best case scenario mean that we have a long cold winter ahead for our soldiers deployed in the heights that that's the way it's going in the very uh, you know to start with 
So if you look at the, uh, you know, the trajectory of talks that have taken place, uh, the Chinese, uh, you know, intentions as we can gauge from the statements that they are making, uh, I think we are in for a long haul. Uh, the Indian Army is preparing, it's already prepared for, for staying through the winters. Uh, I think the larger point uh, I want to make is, uh, you know, the Chinese must understand that this is something that can trigger, uh, you know, an escalation. As I said earlier, so many troops facing off each other on the LAC. Uh, whether, uh, you know, uh, this is the kind of uh, atmosphere we want uh, along the border. So it would be better, I think, if the Chinese sort of, uh, you know, climb down a bit from a very rigid position. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are going to continue to see, uh, you know, incidents like this happening along the LSA.